All right, here we go. Time now for Bay Area Backstage and hanging out with me this morning, some really great guests. We're going to take a look at a classic piece of literature making its way to the stage once again. Academy Award winning screenwriter Aaron Sorkin brings his Broadway adaptation of Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird on tour. And this book is a staple of educational literature uh, for so many. A little controversy about that now these days, but it tells a story of racial tension in a small town in Alabama through the lens of a child. So joining us in studio, we are thrilled the stars of the the show are here. Yagle Welch, who plays Tom Robinson, <laughs> and Melanie Moore, who plays Scout Finch. Thank you guys for being here. We appreciate it. Oh my gosh, thanks for having Thank us. Thank you for having Happy us. Here. You know, it's it's really interesting to take on a role like this because, you know, it's been done in a movie. It's been done so many times on stage. What are the challenges of that? You want to talk first? Um, I, I would say some of the challenges are um, just telling a story that is, is so rooted in such history of such a heavy topic every night, but it's also a blessing at the same time because we get to sort of do something so communal and that brings everybody together. It's such an empowering story. So it is challenging, but it's also uplifting. And I also think Aaron Sorkin has done such a beautiful job of really turning the story on its head. It's told, obviously, I'm not an eight-year-old. I play Scout Finch. Uh, and it's told from a sort of adult uh, Scout's perspective, sort of looking back. And the audience immediately is confronted with a question as I'm talking to them, dressed like an eight-year-old, dressed like Scout. And so immediately the story that they know and love is sort of turned on its head. And they have to sort of sit forward in their seats. They have to pay attention and engage with the story all over again, sort of anew. Um, and then we sort of go back in time. But... Um, uh, yeah, it's it's in a beautiful new way. So it, it really gives us an opportunity to sort of take on new life with the show. And I think that's important because, as I mentioned when we did the intro, there's been a little controversy as of late mm -hmm. as far as the book being allowed in some schools. I know there's some teachers in Washington who are complaining about it being mm -hmm. one of the reads for, you know, their students. I read it growing up. I know a lot of students have. And sometimes I think when you see things played out on stage, you can sort of understand a little bit, but, you know, just updating it for, you know, anyone in modern times now. Yeah, there's, it's interesting because Aaron Sorkin sort of centers the story. It's very much a family story, a coming of age story of a, of a young white family dealing with racism in a very real way, real way for the first time. But he also centers it around the trial of Tom Robinson, um, uh, a man who's falsely accused of rape, a crime he couldn't have possibly committed, and um, he is sentenced and he does die. I mean, spoiler alert, but everybody knows. I mean, no, but that's the controversy. The thing yeah. is, like, George Floyd, this just happened to George Floyd. This happened to Breonna Taylor. This happened to so many countless um, black and brown people um, that we can now see video footage of it happening. And the story was written about a family in 1934, and it was written in the late 1950s, early 1960s, but the same thing is still happening. Mm -hmm. So it's still relevant. And so I'm sorry for people who may want to protest this story, but it is very much a part of history, American history, black history, and, and humanity history. And I think it's something that we need to continue to address until we don't have George Floyd's anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think you said that so perfectly. And you do want people to have an opportunity. You connect to the actors on stage. Like when you are playing your character, I am connecting with you as an audience member. And I'm sure that's very important in telling the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that what we would love for people to leave the theater feeling is, um, you know, uh, feeling like you want to have a conversation about the show, feeling if if you feel too much like on, on like the argument on the left is that it maybe uh, looks too much like a white savior story. Why? do you want to have that conversation and how did our show sort of differ with that opinion how did it uh, center in the same in the same vein as that or if on the right side if you feel that it makes Jim Crow South look bad, which is an insane argument, in my mm. opinion. Uh, uh, you know, why, why did that sort of uh, enrage you? Why did our show make you have those feelings? Whichever side of the argument you're on, whether or not you love or hate our show, we're th we think you'll love it. But it, no matter what, we want you to leave and have those conversations with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors, and say, as Diego was talking about, why does this look so much, uh, in 1934, why does this look so much like 2023? I applaud yeah. both of you for tackling such a great play and a great piece of literature and bringing it to stage and here in the Bay Area. So hopefully everyone will go check it out. So yes. thank yes, you so much please. for coming in. Thank I you. appreciate your thank time. You. Thanks for having us. Uh, so check it out. To Kill a Mockingbird starts tomorrow night at the Golden Gate Theater in San Francisco and will run through Sunday. All right, Jess, we're going to send it over to